Hello and welcome to today's screencast on the energy continuum. So, so far what we've looked at is the energy systems and we've looked specifically at the ATP, PC system, glycolytic and the aerobic system. And we've looked at how these are used to resynthesize ATP so that we have energy. And we focused mainly on these different factors here. So I'm confident that for each of these factors, you'd be able to kind of discuss the ATP, PC system, glycolytic system and aerobic system. So today's topic, the energy continuum, isn't a new topic, it's just a continuation of the energy systems. So when I go through this now, your Cornell notes are going to be on different aspects of what I'm going to tell you. And your first thing you're going to be doing is I want you to draw out this visual representation of the three energy systems called the energy continuum. Okay, so this now what I'm going to show you is a visual representation of the energy continuum. And it is looking at all three energy systems and how we have to consider that these three energy systems work together depending on the intensity and the duration of the actual activity taking place by the athlete. So I want you to draw this and I want you to kind of be able just to kind of understand what it is. So this is the energy continuum. So if we just look at it quickly, we've got red, the ATP, PC system, anaerobic glycolysis or the glycolytic system is blue and green is the aerobic energy system. Here we've got time. And then we've got the capacity of energy system in percentages here. So, 0 to 10 seconds, we use predominantly, we use the ATP PC system. We know that PC stores run out after approximately 10 seconds. So then what happens is from 10 seconds on to 3 minutes, we predominantly use the glycolytic system with regards to um, energy. And after the three minutes, when our glycolytic system, or, or when lactic acid starts to get produced at that high intensity, we're starting to breathe in oxygen. Oxygen is being converted and used to resynthesize ATP, and we start to use the aerobic energy system for low intensity or moderate intensity exercise from five minute, from three minutes to approximately five hours. However, you can see here that the aerobic energy system is being used in some tiny form throughout the whole of the first activity with regards to the first couple of minutes. However, we are talking now about the predominant energy system being used. So all three are being used at one time. However, one of the energy systems is more predominant than the others. For example, first 10 seconds, ATP PC system, high intensity activity. Um, 10 seconds to three minutes, we've got the glycolytic system. It's predominant and then three minutes to five hours predominantly the aerobic energy system however the other systems are being used the only thing I want you to be aware of is these crossovers here and here so when the ATP PC system starts to get depleted and we start to use a glycolytic system this is called a threshold and all we need to know is the threshold between the two systems so it is literally called the ATP PC and glycolytic threshold and this threshold here is known as the glycolytic aerobic threshold. It makes sense, glycolytic system is starting to kind of lose its way, the aerobic energy system is starting to take over, glycolytic um, aerobic threshold. So I want you to get that down. You also need to get down, you need to know what the energy continuum is or what it refers to. Now the energy continuum is the relative contribution of the three energy systems and it is the predominant energy system is dependent upon the intensity and the duration of exercise. So as I've just said, we need to get it out of our head now that all three energy systems work separately. They all work together. However, one is being used more than the other two. So one is more predominant and that depends on the intensity and the duration. And that must make sense to you because we have learned that the ATP PC system is used for high intensity, short duration, 10 seconds. The glycolytic system is used for high intensity work after 10 seconds for the to three minutes approximately. And the aerobic energy system is used for low to moderate intensity for long duration, which is like three minutes to five hours. So that should make sense to you. If we just quickly move on to the specification now and what we need to be looking at for regards to the energy continuum, what you need to know. You need to know about predominant energy system used during exercise. We should know that because we've kind of got the time, so we, so we know that. How intensity and duration of exercise influence which energy system is predominantly used to resynthesize ATP. Again, from what we've done, this should kind of be relatively simple for you to understand. If the intensity is high, duration is short, we should know which, which energy system we're going to be using. 
interpretation of figures relating to the contribution of the three energy systems to exercise at different intensities and durations, and then finally the interplay of energy systems during intermittent exercise and factors that affect this interplay, intensity, which we know, duration, recovery periods and fitness levels. So, for your Cornell notes today, we're going to be concentrating really on this intensity and duration. This is a potential exam question. Explain what the energy continuum is and justify the position of one sporting activity on the energy continuum. So really, at the end of this screencast, you should be able to answer this. So this is kind of like a bit of a lower order kind of question that you might get with four marks. And um, as I said, if you want to, at the end of this screencast, if you want to give that question a go, you should be able to answer it. So. As I've said, the energy continuum refers to the relative contribution of the three energy systems. Predominant energy systems depend upon um, intensity and duration of the exercise. You need to be able to be aware of all of this. If you this question previously that said about um, explaining what the energy continuum is, you'd have to be able to say all this. You can't just say part of it. You have to say it all. So the energy continuum refers to the relative contribution of the three energy systems. The predominant energy system is dependent upon intensity and duration of the exercise. Now, just so you know, I did say this at the start, and I just want to make it clear again, you're not going to get any marks for saying this. However, you do need to be aware that these energy systems don't work in isolation. They do interact with each other. So during intermittent sports, i.e. invasion games such as rugby, football, netball, hockey, so on, these energy systems contribute differently during that whole sport but it just depends which one is predominant at what part of or what time or what skill is being produced within that sport or what action is being used in that sport it depends on which energy system will be used and we're going to go on to that in a minute now so explain how intensity and duration of exercise influence which energy system is predominantly used to resynthesize ATP now if we think about the ATP PC system just as a system on its own if we need to explain how intensity and duration of the exercise influences this system, we should be able to do that from what we've learned so far, so this isn't going to be new to you. So this system is predominant when high intensity, or when the intensity of the exercise is high, and the duration is between 0 to 10 seconds. Fantastic example, shot put. Anything high intensity, short duration, 100 meter sprint. Okay, so we should be able to do this again for the glycolytic system. So this is predominant when exercise intensity is high and the duration is between 10 seconds and 3 minutes. You sport an example 400 metres, 800 metres and um, tracking back in hockey, football, rug rugby. Okay. And then finally, explain how intensity and duration of exercise influence which energy system is normally used to resynthesize ATP. If we're looking at the aerobic energy system, we're going to be saying the predominant it's predominant when exercise intensity is low to moderate and the duration is three minutes plus five hours. Your example would be a marathon run. So make sure you have notes on that, make sure you are aware of that, make sure it makes sense to you, make sure you have questions that are kind of going to give you the answers for these type of these these things here, and we can move on. So, explain the interplay of energy systems during intermittent exercise. So, intermittent exercise is where the intensity alternates. So, this could either be during interval training, between work and relief intervals, or during a game with breaks of play or changes in intensity. For example, rugby, football, hockey. Okay, so this is all this is saying here. So, intermittent exercise is where the exercise intensity alternates during interval training or team invasion games. Now, in an exam, you may be asked um, to be able to give, um, given a team game of your choice, for example, this hand might start, giving a team game of your choice, can you please explain um, the intermittent exercise in terms of exercise intensity and different energy system contribution. Therefore, you must be able to give an action in that game you choose, the system that's being used for that action, and then you have to be able to justify it. So I'm going to do it now for each of the energy systems, and I'm going to focus on rugby for you. So, action. A rugby tackle. Hopefully, we should all understand that a rugby tackle would use the ATP PC system. Why? How are we going to justify this? Well, it'll use the ATP PC system because the rugby tackle is an extremely high done at an extremely high intensity and it's explosive and it's an anaerobic action 
and it takes short duration, seconds it'll take. So if we move on to the glycolytic system, we could have a recovery sprint. So recovery sprint, glycolytic system, how are we going to justify it? Well, because in recovery sprint it involves changing direction at high intensity, as in the anaerobic action, and a recovery sprint could take longer than 10 seconds. If you're running the length of the pitch, if you've got, if you just tackled someone, you have to get up, run back, or run into position, etc., taking longer than 10 seconds at that high intensity, you're going to use the glycolytic system. So then when in rugby, for example, would the aerobic energy system be used? It'd be used during you walking back into position. So walking back into position would be an aerobic system or when the aerobic energy system is being used. And for us to justify it, it's because walking back to position during a break is low intensity and that action is aerobic, i.e. we're breathing deeply, heavily, we're getting oxygen on board and that oxygen can kind of like, gas exchange take place, can go into the muscle, etc. And then we start to use that oxygen to produce or resynthesize ATP. So, that is everything we're covering in this screencast. Please ensure you have Cornell notes set out for explaining the interplay of energy systems during intermittent exercise. Please make sure you have it for the previous information we have, which is regards to how intensity and duration of exercise influences which energy system we use. And then finally, please ensure you know what the energy continuum actually is. And just so you are aware, you have to mention this whole process here. So, if you can get notes done on that, and I'll see you less than that, would be fantastic. Cheers. Bye.